Welcome to Erickson Institute's 2022 Commencement Ceremony. Hello graduates and welcome to Erickson's 2022 Commencement Ceremony. Although we are still in a pandemic and doing this ceremony virtually again, we are thrilled to be able to celebrate all of your accomplishments. All of the graduating classes are special, but you also had the distinction of having finished your degree during an academic year that coincides with our 55th anniversary. You're now joining the generations of Erickson graduates who have and will continue to shape the early childhood field. Let's get our program started with a message from Ellen Song, chair of Erickson's Board of Trustees. Ellen has served on Erickson's board for six years, and in addition to chairing our board, she currently leads the Academic Programs Committee. Ellen is an attorney and is active in several organizations that support children and education. Welcome, Ellen. Thank you, David. My name is Ellen Song, and I serve as the chair of Erickson's Board of Trustees. I would like to welcome you, our graduates, and your families and friends, and all the members of our Erickson community to this virtual commencement ceremony. I'm proud and honored to be here with you tonight to celebrate our 2022 graduates. Your graduation is a momentous milestone and a huge accomplishment, not only for you, but also for your family, friends, and everyone who supported you while you were dedicating yourself to your studies and persevering through the challenges that you and your family faced, including, for some of you, holding a full-time job while working towards your degree. You're graduating in a year in which we're still living with a pandemic that has fundamentally changed the world. As we hold steadfast through these unpredictable times and turn lessons learned into opportunities, let us be emboldened to serve as a positive force in the support of all children and their families. So today, I thank you personally, as well as on behalf of the entire board and the Erickson community, thank you for dedicating yourselves to our collective mission of improving the lives of all children and their families. I can't wait to hear all about the amazing work you'll do, and I know you'll make all of us proud. Congratulations and enjoy your evening. Thank you, Ellen. We know your dedication runs deep for Erickson. I will now introduce Erickson's president, Dr. Mariana Soto Manning. Mariana joined the Erickson family last autumn, beginning her presidency after a distinguished tenure at Teachers College at Columbia University. Throughout her career in early childhood education, Mariana has used her passion for equity and justice to envision and build learning environments that support the unique brilliance of multilingual students and students of color while dedicating herself to developing educators who support all children, their families, and their communities. Mariana's personal life experiences have shaped her into an advocate for children and champion change in classrooms and systems that continue to oppress children of color. Mariana began her career as a teacher in public preschools in Brazil where, as a Brazilian woman of color, she observed the need for change. That mission took her to the University of Georgia at Athens, where she completed her undergraduate degree, graduate, and doctoral degrees. It's my pleasure to welcome Mariana. Thank you, David. To our honorary degree recipients, our keynote speaker, our trustees and alumni, faculty and staff, parents, family members, friends, and most especially to our graduates, Welcome to Erickson's virtual commencement celebration for 2022. We are here once again in a virtual setting for the commencement, and I very much look forward to celebrating with you at tomorrow's in-person reception at Erickson, meeting your families, friends, and celebrating you. Graduates, you have made us all proud as you chose to be part of a community that values diversity, inclusion, social justice, when you joined Erickson, you could not have envisioned that you would be completing your degree requirements in the throes of a global pandemic. 
And yet, despite the uncertainty, you persevered. Throughout my life, I have known that it's essential to know your history because it reveals the present. And through your history, you can work toward a restorative future, a more just future. The pandemic has pulled the curtain back to reveal that the education system is broken and it has shunned the spotlight on the inequities that have long existed in black, indigenous, and other communities of color. The future of the field needs your vision of a better future for young children, families, and our communities. As the fifth president of Erickson, my mission and Erickson's mission are aligned toward a North Star vision. And we are committed to the pursuit of justice as advocates for inclusive teaching while righting the wrongs of the past for all our children. Graduates, we look forward to seeing what you accomplish in your next chapter. Know the power of children. Be firm in your core values. Keep the same drive that got you to this day as you are now equipped to take on a world that needs you more than ever. Congratulations, and please stay connected to your Erickson family. Thank you, Mariana, for guiding us towards the North Star of equity and justice and having Erickson continue its reputation as a premier institute of higher education committed to ensuring that all children have equitable opportunities to realize their full potential. I will now introduce Dr. Pamela Epley. Commencement day is here and you are gathered around your family and biggest supporters to celebrate your achievements. Members of the class of 2022, you can now call Erickson your alma mater. This institute was established with a vision and hope for the future of our children, families, and communities through the lens of restorative justice. You now carry that mission and all that you have learned at Erickson that will help you to become early childhood professionals, leaders, and advocates capable of meeting today's and tomorrow's challenges. And we as early childhood professionals face many challenges. From the impact and disruption the pandemic has had on young children and their families, to debates about whether and how teachers discuss issues of race and racism in early childhood classrooms, to controversies around mandating how children are taught to read, such as the right to read legislation. As Erickson graduates, we know you will have a positive impact on these and many other issues. I would like to thank our remarkable faculty who have served not only as teachers, but also as wise mentors who I hope you will continue to stay in touch with. I would also like to give a special thanks and well wishes to our longtime faculty members who are retiring this year. Dr. Jillian McNamee, Dr. Mary Hinesberry, and Rebecca Iskowich. Each of them has dedicated their expertise and passion to Erickson, leaving it better because of their presence. Your graduation year of 2022 will prove to be a significant one as we hopefully emerge from the pandemic. Today, you are likely feeling hopeful, accomplished, and perhaps uncertain, an uncertainty that currently impacts all of us. But if we can remember the important lessons of perseverance, innovation, and the power of relationships to carry us through uncertain times, then we have truly gained much more than just academic knowledge. My hope for each of you is that you strengthen those reflective relationships that you have established within our learning community. Today marks the end of just one phase in, your life, in our lifelong relationship with you. We want to stay connected with you, to support you with the career assistance, continuing education, and networking opportunities as you continue to grow professionally. We want to be part of your extraordinary journey. Congratulations, class of 2022. And now it is my honor to introduce our keynote speaker and honorary degree recipient, Dr. Patricia Kuhl. Dr. Kuhl is a professor of speech and hearing sciences and co-director of the Institute for Learning and Brain Sciences at the University of Washington. She holds the Bezos Family Foundation Endowed Chair in Early Childhood Learning and is internationally recognized for her research on early language learning and bilingual brain development, for pioneering brain measures on young children, and for studies that show how young children learn. 
It is my pleasure to welcome Dr. Kuhl. President Soto Manning, faculty and staff, and graduates of the Erickson Institute 2022. Thank you so much for the invitation to address you this evening. It is an honor. I know many of you are in your homes this evening, but wherever you are and whomever you're with, please graduates of the Erickson 2022 class, stand up and stand tall. You did it. I want you to take this moment to congratulate yourself. Say thank you for all the effort and all the work you put in to achieving this prestigious degree. Congratulations. I want to take a moment now to also thank your parents and friends who helped support you along the way. My parents taught me that an education was a pathway to the stars. It allowed me to achieve my goals and I wouldn't have without my parents' support. I thank them every day and I want you to take the time tonight to thank your parents and your entire support team for the encouragement that they gave you. Let's take a moment to think about the time that we're in. I think we can all agree that this particular moment, this time is likely to be the most challenging of the 21st century. A worldwide pandemic has brought us to our knees. Our lives and our jobs have been altered tremendously. Our social lives have changed completely. Young students in school have lost academic ground. Young adults and teens report that they're anxious and depressed. So it's all the more remarkable that you're here today, that you've achieved your goals in the midst of this particular time. I'm in awe at the resilience you've shown during this period of time. So once again, congratulations. Tonight, I wanna to talk to you about the social brain, the pandemic, and our human ability to adjust to change. I'm a brain scientist, and many of my studies on language acquisition have taught me that the social play, brain plays a critical role in the acquisition of that cognitive skill. The social brain is amazing. When we are face-to-face, -face, the science shows us that we have an ability to read the goals and intentions of the person that we're speaking to. There are areas of the brain dedicated to analyzing the human face, to the expressions and movements, subtle movements on the face that indicate our mood, our emotions, and our intentions, and other areas dedicated to our eye, move, eye movements and what we're interested in and what we're paying attention to, as well as our tones of voice that give away what our true feelings are. We have this ability to read each other and add that information to what it is you're hearing the person say. Sometimes that bit, those bits of information are in conflict. So the point is our social brains when we're face to face have an amazing skill to analyze the emotions and cognitive inner workings of the partner that we're with. There's evidence in brain science studies that when we face one another and we're having a comfortable conversation that our brains fire in synchrony. Maybe that gives some meaning to the idea that sometimes we feel so in sync with other people. My own work provides an example of how important the social brain is to infants and young children. I discovered that early in development, infants can distinguish the sounds that separate words in all languages of the world. This is a skill unique to the babies. While they are citizens of the world with regard to language, you and I are culture bound. We can hear the distinctions just for the words in languages that we've been exposed to early in development. Sometime between six and 12 months, infants' universal abilities with regard to language are narrowed and they begin to focus only on the sounds that are used in their particular language to distinguish words. So those citizens of the world become more culture bound as they approach their first birthdays. Now, this makes total sense from a physiological standpoint. We're born with 86 billion neurons, but they're not connected. Between zero and three, the synapses, the connections between neurons grow at a million a second. By the age of three, 
children have 86 trillion synapses or connections. And then as the children approach adolescence, the ones that are not used, the synapses or connections are pruned. Imagine what your experience did to prune your brains. Well, so while it makes sense from a physiological standpoint, what I wondered is, could I prevent that narrowing from occurring? Could I give young babies an experience that would allow them to stay open to multiple languages as they proceeded to develop between zero and five? The experiment I ran was to bring nine month old infants. This is a critical time in development between six and 12 months. Nine monthers came into the laboratory and for the first time were exposed to a new language. In the first case, it was Mandarin Chinese. It was like having Mandarin relatives come visit for a month and for 12 sessions played with you on the floor, speaking to you only in Mandarin. What happened was amazing. The babies learned so well that in 12 sessions, they mastered the sounds and could detect the words of Mandarin Chinese, as well as the kids growing up in Beijing or in Taipei, who had only been exposed to Mandarin since birth. So this remarkable social learning made me wonder what role the human being was playing. So in the next experiment, I brought back more babies to the laboratory, and this time, the same dosage, the same room, Everything was the same with regard to their experience, except they were being exposed over a television set. Beautiful videos played over a standard television. Infants were interested in these stimuli. They crawled up to the TV, they looked at it, they touched it. But the brain science, the results showed they learned absolutely nothing. So we have a case where the social brain is absolutely critical. Phenomenal learning occurred when people were face to face, when the children had their tutors in front of them, but absolutely nothing was learned when they were gleaning that same information from a television set. So the social brain is like a trigger for learning. And again, I wondered what's going on up there? What happens to the human brain when we're faced with a social as opposed to a non-social stimulus? Thankfully, I have a very big brain imaging machine that's completely safe and non-invasive to provide some answers. This machine allows magnetoencephalography or MEG for short. It's totally safe and non-invasive, even though it looks like a hairdryer from Mars. The machine is so safe that you can put a young baby in the machine. And we were the first in the world to do that. As the baby sat in the MEG machine, we presented social versus non-social stimuli, like a word as opposed to a complex sound that was not produced by a human. And what we sound was, found was quite surprising. When you just listen to a social stimulus like a word, not only the auditory centers of the brain are activated, but the motor centers that the baby would need to respond socially are activated at the same moment in time. It turns out the baby brain is ready for a social stimulus right from the beginning. The brain is prepared to react the second that something comes in that is perceived to be social and requires a social response. This occurs even before the, the baby is capable of speaking. So the baby brain is wired for a social stimulus. And it makes me wonder whether or not our social abilities are the key difference between human and non-human primates. There's something very special about our social brains. And that brings me back to the pandemic. What happened to our social brains during the pandemic as we were remo removed from face-to-face -face conversations, except within our households? I think that those areas of the brain were not receiving the kind of typical stimulation that we get in our normal day-to-day -day interactions. Perhaps it was like the babies struggling to learn from a screen, that when we're on Zoom, we simply don't get the same action from the circuitry in our brain that evolved to respond to social stimulation. These results help explain some of the things that we've seen, the loss in learning, the inability to connect, this sense of loneliness that you hear people reporting. We need our social brains, not only for emotion, but also for learning. The life of a scientist is very, very interesting. And there are some responsibilities that come with it. 
my science brought me to three White Houses. In 1997, I was invited to the White House by President Clinton and Mrs. Clinton. In 2001, Mrs. Bush and President Bush invited me to the White House. And again, President Obama in 2014. In each case, I was asked to describe the science to them and to Congress about the child's brain, about the enormous potential for learning, and about the responsibility that society has to provide children with opportunities to learn. The brain is born learning, but opportunities to learn have to be provided for that learning to occur. And we know in the United States that the opportunities for learning are not equivalent across social class. And this is something we really have to work on. Now, naively, I thought that my visits to the White House, that my talks to Congress would help bring about tremendous change in the United States. I thought we might have universal preschool. I thought that we would have childcare support for parents, things that I've seen frequently in my visits to foreign countries in Europe and in Asia. The science did make a tremendous difference, but it's not been enough. And that's where you come in. You've graduated from a prestigious institution whose mission and vision is to understand that children are born learning and that they need opportunities to learn and they need support from communities and from families. You will create miracles in your work with parents and the families and children. And I believe that your mission is to make changes in individual children's lives, but also to continue to push for the kind of country that we will need to support all children across all classes to allow all of our children to have the opportunities to learn that they need to reach their potential. I wanna close by citing an Austrian philosopher, Otto Neuroth, who talked about how our minds and brains are like a boat that has to be repaired as we navigate the waters of life. Remember Homer's Ulysses? that as he returned from the war, he had to keep rebuilding his boat to deal with the storms that came his way. Your life over the past two years has required you to rebuild your boat. And you were not able to return to dry dock to make those changes. You had to do it on the fly in the open sea. None of us were prepared for what the pandemic uh, presented to us. But all of us invented ways to survive. We adjusted our lives. We adjusted and made choices to make sure that we could continue to, to make progress towards our goals. You made the changes you need to make. You had uh, brains that allowed you with neuroplasticity to make adjustments to deal with the storm that you were presented. And I can speculate that because you made changes this time and you dealt with the current storm that you were presented with, that when the next one occurs and life is complicated, there will always be next ones that we will do as well. For now, I want you to celebrate your brains, your lives and your choices and embrace your social, social contacts. They're important to your heart, essential to your brains. Good luck to all of you. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you, Dr. Cole, for your inspiring words. Our next speaker knows the meaning of inspiration and action. Today, we're honoring Pastor Chris Harris, who receives an honorary degree for his work in supporting children and families, as well as Erickson students, who in turn at his Bright Star Community Outreach Program. Pastor Harris leads the Bright Star Church in Chicago's Bronzeville community and has ministered in more than 24 countries singing gospel and jazz. Pastor Harris is the proud husband of Jojo Harris and the father of four. He serves his community by dedicating himself to advocating for youth and families throughout Chicago. Importantly, he engages in healing communities impacted by violence and trauma. He has inspired us at Erickson to lead by example, and it is my honor to celebrate the contributions of Pastor Chris Harris and bestow him with an honorary degree. Congratulations, Pastor Harris. God bless you, my friends. Pastor Chris Harris here, founder and CEO of Bright Star Community Outreach. I am the pastor of two amazing churches on the south side of Chicago. 
Bright Star Church Chicago in Bronzeville, as well as St. James Church Chicago in the West Pullman community. I am proud to say that I am the chairman of the Greater Bronzeville Community Action Council, where we focus on making all schools better in the Greater Bronzeville community. That's 67th Street South, 22nd Street North, Lakeshore Drive, Dan Ryan. And I wanna thank all of the principals, the administrators, the educators, teachers, the staffers, all of you all that are part of the community-based and faith-based organizations and students who come to the table to make sure that scholastic achievement is a major focus in our community. I gotta tell you, I had the privilege to graduate from Tabernacle Christian Academy High School in 1992. And I began to travel the world, 24 different countries, 20 something different world tours, singing gospel and jazz. Opened my eyes to a global opportunity. And then I was ready to go to college. But the church that my mom, and now I pastor, she was the executive assistant to the pastor. She took all of the money she saved up for me to go to college and she gave it to the church to make sure the church did not foreclose. I gotta tell you, devastated. But guess what? God had a plan. Who knew that the seed she was sowing would turn into a harvest of me being the pastor? And now I'm paying it forward in the same way that my predecessor, Dr. James Stovall, did on my behalf. Now let's fast forward. I'm a father, several children, and my son, Chris Harris Jr., came home one day and said, Dad, can you help me with my homework? When I opened up his textbook, I was blown away that my name was in the same book that my son was learning out of. A lot of people want to make us think that the reason our schools are failing are because they are under-enrolled or because they are underperforming. No, no, no. Many of them are failing because they are under-resourced. And this is what fueled my fire as the chairman of the Greater Bronzeville CAC to make sure we fight for all of our students and staffers to have what they need. Well, I told the CAC, if I'm gonna be the chair, you're gonna have to make sure you adopt my 40, 20, 20, 20 plan. Now, let me be honest. I had no clue what that was first, <laughs> but guess what? It was 40% focusing on early childhood development, 20% elementary, 20% high school, and they focused 20% on college and career readiness. They absolutely voted for me unanimously to be the chairman. And so I said, since I put that out there, now I need to learn more about early childhood. So I reached out and the friends at Erickson accepted me as a fellow. It was an eye-opening experience, mind-blowing educational experience for me. And I recognized the problems with resources and the fact that many of the teachers who are the folks that are on the front line with our babies, they are underpaid and also under-resourced. It fueled my fight, and I'm super excited to make sure that I continue to push to make sure that every school in our communities have what they need to educate our babies. I'm committed to this. And guess what? I tell people all the time, the only degrees I have are the degrees on my thermometer. One semester of Moody Bible Institute, one semester of Olive Harvey College, one year of college. So I had no degrees until now. I am humbled, I am honored, and I am deeply grateful to the president, to the board of directors, to all of my graduating class, and everybody at Erickson. I'm so grateful to have this honor of receiving this honorary degree. I commit to you that the fight that was in the past will be even greater in the future. Thank you for this acknowledgement. I look forward to working with all of you all and please continue the fight to make sure that early childhood development is at the forefront of all of our minds. Thank you for your remarks, Pastor Harris. Erickson's honorary degree recipients are worthy role models for Erickson's community of faculty, staff, alumni, and especially students. By the virtue of the authority vested in me, by the Board of Trustees and upon the recommendation of the faculties of Erickson Institute, I am pleased to recognize Dr. Patricia Kuhl and Pastor Chris Harris, our honorary degree recipients. Students are the heart of Erickson. 
And I am pleased to introduce this year's student speaker, Cassandra Favela, who is graduating with a Master of Social Work. When I first saw that I was nominated to speak, I was surprised and had so many ideas running through my mind. Yet, I had no clue what to even say. After days of thinking, I decided that in a true Erickson fashion, I was going to sit down and take time for some self-reflection. I reflected on the past couple of years here at Erickson, the people I've met, the experiences I've had and heard about, the things I've learned, and my life. While there have been years of reading, discussions, papers, reflection, and even more reading, it's also been years of growth for all of us. The people I first met on my first day here are not the same people sitting here today. Not only are we older, but also more confident and more informed. It has been a long road for all of us. We all took various paths that led us to this one point, a one-of-a-kind learning experience focused on child development. We have all been on the same road for the past few years, and now is the time that we once again take our separate paths. And from the conversations I've had with many of you, while we are each taking a different path, all paths lead toward a similar goal, to work with and support people. I have learned that this profession is not for the weak of heart, but for the kind-hearted. And while our goals are without a doubt amazing, I want to leave commencement making sure we all remember a few things. As said by Socrates and my friend Cynthia Gonzalez, I know that I know nothing. We may no longer be students at Erickson, but we are still students of life and always will be. Do not start your new career thinking to, you have to know everything and be perfect, because you don't. We will never truly know everything, and we will learn from our experiences and continue learning and developing for the rest of our lives. We may not be students, but we will be first-year professionals, which can be one of the most challenging years as we continue to build our identities, practice, and transition away from being students. It can be like the first year of marriage. There can be lots of changes, transitions, and learning. As stated by one of my favorite professors, Florence Komondo, remember to have compassion for self. Be compassionate not only for the people you will be working with, but also for yourself. You are human, you will make mistakes, and you have to take care of yourself. As many of my peers have heard me say over and over again, practice what you preach. Think about what you are telling those that you are working with, and remember to do things for yourself. If not, how can we expect the people we work with to do it as well? Be mindful of the things you say and the things that you do. Most importantly, make time for reflection. While reflection has been given to us as assignments over the past few years, it will be something that we may no longer have after today. So remember to take time to sit down and reflect on whatever may be going on at your job or even in your personal life. You, of course, don't have to listen to anything I just said, but try to keep it in mind as you start this new chapter in your life. Before I leave today, I would like to thank all of you here for making this the past few years a one-of-a-kind learning experience. I want to thank my professors, the friends I have made, and my family for putting up with me being in virtual classes at home for two years and supporting my professional goals. Congratulations, class of 2022. As my favorite childhood TV character would say, lo hicimos, we did it. Thank you, Cassandra. If students are the heart of Erickson, our faculty are the minds and hands that not only provide relationship-based instruction, but also guide and counsel students through our rigorous academic programs. A small school like Erickson allows faculty and students to really get to know one another, creating bonds that can last a lifetime. Our academic degree programs are headed by directors who will now read the names of the graduates in their areas. We will recognize candidates for the degrees of Master of Science in Child Development, Master of Science in Early Childhood Education, and Master of Social Work. Please welcome Dr. Jillian McNamee, Director of the Early Childhood Education Program, which includes the teacher education and the online master's program. Dr. Cassandra McKay-Jackson, Director of the Social Work Program. And Dr. Samina Hadi Tabassum, the Child Development Program Director. I am honored to read the names of the following candidates for Erickson's Master of Science in Early Childhood Education with Illinois Teacher Licensure. For the class of 2022, Megan Alexander, Megan Austria, Kimberly Bright, 
Marlena Galvez. Abby Halperin Robinson. Emily Heck. Lauren Meyer. Mary Orndorf. Nicole Schreiber. Natalie Segal. Alyssa Siki. Hai Jiao Xiong. I am honored to read the names of the following candidates for Erickson's Master of Science in Early Childhood Education. Zoqueen Abengawi. Holly Ackerman. Christina Alexander. Oni Austin. Catherine Baldwin. Sonji Barnes. Anna Barrett. Lydia Bowers. Lee Carlson Hernandez. Anna Chalico. Robin Siselski. Ramona Clayton. Demita Coleman. Haley Damron. Amanda Eicher. Satoku Herb. Dietrich Evans. Monique Foster. Crystal Fountain. Marty Freeman. Juliana Grandinetti. Rebecca Gray. Consuelo Haller. Utong Han. Holly Herman. Vola Hill. Michelle Hui. Jiwan Hyun. Jacqueline Imberger. Jamesia Jenkins. Sarah Johnson. Brandy Jones. Natasha Jones. Lorraine Kimbrough. Ambria King. Lori Kaiser. Aubrey Kuneller. Anne Kozacek. Aileen Landau. Stephanie Landry. LaDoris Lee. Macy Lemke. Sinai Leo. Janelle Liwanog. Angelica Lopez. Tiffany McHarland. Janice McLean. Haley Mychalk. Teresa Mo. Tanshu Moore. 
Erica Moran Garcia. Anne Murphy. Melanie Nurland. Shamia Newsom. Ashley Norbut. Marina Norton. Jessica Olson. Teresa Unstadt. Kelly Owen. Juliana Pendleton Noel. Miranda Pettengill. Margaret Pierce. Regina Puckett. Crystal Ramirez. Patricia Razo. Sophia Rebelar. Kylie Ray. Lida Riley. Catherine Rosinski. Lorraine Rua Figueoa. Nicolette Sanson. Kristen Santason. Julie Smetko. Marissa Spooner. Catherine Stein. Katie Zafarchek. Juliet Taylor. Tracy Valdez. Randall Villaber. Susima Wiracoon. Megan Wernemont. Jocelyn Wilcox. Rosalie Williams. Wendy Young. Norzani Zukifli. I will now introduce Dr. Cassandra McKay Jackson, Director of the Social Work Program. I am honored to read the names of the following candidates for Erickson's Master of Social Work. For the class of 2022, Isha Agarwal, Clarissa Alvarez, Lauren Broderick, Samuel Bronson, Caitlin Carrig, Victoria Seal, Madeline Chaparro, Hannah Day, Cassandra Favila, Cynthia Gonzalez, Micah Lehman, Janice Lofton, Jennifer Logan, Christine Miller, Anna Monroy, Elizabeth Nicholson, Judith Rios, Sarah C. Jennifer Steinberg, Bree Taylor, Gabriela Valdivia, Alexis Walker, 
I will now introduce Dr. Samina Hadi Tabasan, Director of Child Development. I am honored to read the names of the following candidates for Erickson's Master of Science in Child Development, Class of 2022. Angelica Atian. Kristen Brown. Nathan Burzma. Ruth Cherendoff. Brooke Shulu. Brianna Corley. Miranda Franco. Allison Halvan. Krista Herrera. Megan Hickey. Catherine Holt Dunn. Caitlin Jackna. Megan Keller. Shannon Lyons. Rachel Malewski. Shannon McCann. Veronica Otero. Shreya Patel. Gretchen Rowenhorst. Morgan Rousseau. Deja Smith. Rachel Stinson. Ashley Stokes. Valerie Stokes. Elizabeth Stone. Deborah Wubchett. Congratulations to the class of 2022. Thank you to our program directors and congratulations to all of our graduates. I'm now pleased to introduce Dr. Amanda Moreno, director of the doctoral program, who will tell us about this year's PhD candidates, Mary Quest and Mary Fries. It's my honor to introduce Erickson's two doctoral graduates. Erickson's doctoral program, offered in collaboration with Loyola University Chicago, focuses on research in applied child development. Our graduates assume intellectual leadership in a variety of roles, including college and university teaching, applied research, and program design and administration. Mary Fries. Committee Chair John Korfmacher. Mary has successfully defended her dissertation entitled Influences of Child and Caregiver Directed Home Visitor Behaviors on Caregiver Engagement and Caregiver Child Interactions. Early child home visiting, where a trained provider comes into the homes of families with young children and offers information, guidance, and support is a popular way to support child and family well-being. Yet, we know little about what exactly home visitors do in their time with families. Her dissertation studied the important question, do home visitors direct their time and attention towards the young child or towards the parent? And does that matter in terms of how engaged that family is with the visit and in how caregivers then interacted with their children? Mary reviewed and coded every single interaction that home visitors had in hundreds of hours of video recordings of home visits conducted across the United States. Results showed that most home visit interactions were largely directed towards caregivers and parents, even though the actual topics of conversation were about the child. She also found that home visitors are still quite didactic in their approach towards the adult caregivers, doing more educating and counseling than coaching or interactive give and take. Her study suggests that home visitors may need more explicit training in how to provide caregivers with active opportunities to practice skills 
while observing and offering feedback. Overall, Mary's results provide important insights regarding how to support home visitors in their work with families. Congratulations, Dr. Fries. Mary Quest, Committee Chair Jillian McNamee. Mary has successfully defended her dissertation study entitled Teaching Presence in Online Discussions, Relationship-Based Learning by Design. In her research, Mary analyzes the nature of learning in online discussions in our Masters in Early Childhood Education program, where she is an expert faculty instructor. Mary has studied the role that the faculty instructor plays in creating opportunities for students to benefit from explaining, analyzing, and proposing solutions to complex problems. She also studied the way faculty instructors open the way for students to carry out this role for one another. Mary's dissertation study explores the frontiers of adult learning in a virtual world and how students can become active participants and agents of change in the learning process right alongside their professors. In this new era when virtual learning has become a necessary and vital part of educational endeavors from preschool through adulthood, she sets out a framework for recognizing the variables in online interactions that have the potential to support and enhance high level thinking and learning. The skills and insights needed to empower and encourage the best thinking from our students is the gift Mary offers the profession in her study and in the online classrooms she studies. Congratulations, Dr. Quest. Thank you, Dr. Marino. I now welcome Dr. Soto Manning to confer the degrees for Erickson's class of 2022. I will now confer the degrees to our students. First, to all of our master's degree students. By the virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees and upon the recommendation of the faculty, I am pleased to recognize the candidates for the degrees of Master of Science in Child Development, Master of Science in Early Childhood Education, and Master of Social Work. And I welcome each of you to the rights, privileges, and responsibilities that accrue thereto. And to our PhD students, Mary Quest and Mary Fries, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees and upon the recommendation of the faculties of Erickson Institute and Loyola University Chicago, I am pleased to recognize the candidates for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy and welcome you to the rights, privileges, and responsibilities that accrue thereto and to the learning society of those who have achieved the highest degree available in our field. Erickson's honorary degree recipients are worthy role models for Erickson's community of faculty, staff, alumni, and specialty students. Now, let's take a few moments to congratulate our graduates. Whether you are in your home, in front of a computer screen, or in your virtual chat box, let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> and congratulations, everyone, you did it. This concludes our 2022 commencement ceremony. Congratulations again to all of our graduates and we look forward to celebrating with you at tomorrow's reception here at Erickson. Thank you to the family and friends who have joined us tonight. And remember, you will always be a member of the Erickson community. Have a wonderful summer.